All right, my sisters and my brothers. If there is no objection, I'm going to ask the Secretary of Staff from the last annual conference to serve until the conference has been organized. All right, Reverend Gordon, are you ready to call the roll? Bishop Reginald T. Jackson. Present. Christy Davis Jackson, Esquire. Excused. Presiding elders, the Reverend Bertram C. Smith. The Reverend Alan Hell Wicker. The Reverend Dr. Harvey R. Williamson. Itinerant elders, the Reverend Caroline Adams. The Reverend Dr. Betty Amica. Betty Amica. Whose bishop is she on? Macon East. Bishop, I have not heard from Dr. Amica, but I know she has some illness problems, and so that may be why she's All not right. here. All right. All right. Excuse. Okay. The Reverend Gwenise Ballard. The Reverend Philip Bannerman. The Reverend Conrad Barnett. The Reverend Marvin Bland. Transferred. The Reverend Nathaniel Brown. Nathaniel Brown. Absent. The Reverend Michael Burney. Michael Burney. Absent. The Reverend Hildridge Bush. The Reverend B.B. Calloway. The Reverend Willie Card. Reverend Willie Card. Absent. The Reverend LaQuint Caswell. LaQuint Caswell. Absent. The Reverend Ella Chambliss. Ella Chambliss. Absent. The Reverend Robert Chapman. The Reverend Mark Christmas. The Reverend Marva Cleveland. The Reverend Marvin Colbert. The Reverend Salatio Coleman. The Reverend Dr. Johnny L. Cook, Jr. The Reverend Jacqueline Craig. The Reverend Tommy Curry. The Reverend Kathy Dargan. The Reverend Michael Davis. The Reverend Naisha Davis. The Reverend Earlston De Silva. Reverend Earlston De Silva. Absent. The Reverend Sean Drains. Transferred. The Reverend Fred Porsche. The Reverend Lavonia Franklin Jr. The Reverend Linda Gaddis. Linda Gaddis. Absent. The Reverend Maria Gordon present. The Reverend Wayne Griffin. The Reverend Melvin Henry. The Reverend Charlie Hicks II. Present. The Reverend Dale Hicks. Present. The Reverend Sharon Homer. The Reverend Cynthia Hughes. The Reverend Reginald Jacobs. 
Reginald Jacobs, absent. The Reverend Simone Jones. She's on Simone her way. Jones. She's on her way, Bishop, from lunch. Next. The Reverend Robert Knight. The Reverend Walter Lamar. Walter Lamar. The Reverend Quentin Maddox. Quentin Reverend Maddox, Do where are you? All right. The Reverend Dr. Michael Martin. Bishop, Doc Dr. Martin is um, having some health issues and begs to be excused. He is coming, All but right. we had to take care of something. Well, excuse. The Reverend Akita Mayweather. The Reverend Carolyn McCrary. Excuse. The Reverend Yvonne McGee. The Reverend Latham Mills. The Reverend Dr. Kevin Moore. The Reverend Jeffrey Murphy. Jeffrey Murphy. Who's his elder? Jeffrey Murphy. Transferred out of conference. Transferred. All right. The Reverend Philemon Nelson. The Reverend Dr. John Norfleet III. The Reverend Patricia Patterson. Patricia Patterson. All right. The Reverend Raymond Robinson. The Reverend Dante Rome. The Reverend Johnny Sanders. The Reverend Janice Sims. The Reverend Sandra Simmons. The Reverend Wilbert Simmons. The Reverend Doreen Smalls. Transferred to Atlanta North. The Reverend Stevie Ward. The Reverend Hayward White, Jr. The Reverend Gloria Wicker. The Reverend Dr. Michelle Williams. Michelle she Williams. She was sitting outside at a table. All right, absent. Next. The Reverend Wal Roland Wallace. The Reverend Richard Q. Ward, Sr. Excuse. The Reverend Arthur Willis. Arthur Willis. Who's his elder? You know where he is? Absent. The Reverend Carlos Young. Carlos Young. Absent. Itinerant deacons. Hold on, is there any itinerant elder present whose name was not called? They weren't here. Uh, let me restate that any itinerant elder who was not present when your name is called, but you're here now. All right, starting from the front. Kent Cras LaQuint Caswell, mark them present. Michael Burney, present. Next. Reginald Jacobs. All right, Nathaniel Brown. Reverend Linda Gaddis. Her name has not been called. She's going to probably be a transfer in conference. Oh, let me come back to you. Right. Ella Chambliss. Yes, sir. What's the name? 
James, are you an itinerant elder? All right. You came in last year, didn't you? Now add his name to the roll. I've added you. All right. Any other? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, Sinclair Gray, add his name. All right, add the name of Anthony Dixon. Mark Carlos Young present. Is there anybody else? All right. Itinerant deacons. Itinerant deacons, the Reverend Petruska Lavert, the Reverend James Nance. Reverend Nance. All right. The Reverend Latanya Renfro. The Reverend Ralph Searcy. The Reverend Stephanie Slocum. But is there any itinerant deacon whose name was not called? All right. Local Lo elders. Local elders, the Reverend Richard Chambliss. Richard Chambliss. What church does he belong to? What church does he belong to? Stand up, I can't hear you. He's gone Baptist. <laughs> All right, Mark is withdrawn. Next. The Reverend Donise Chap Chapman. The Reverend Sarah Denard. Sarah Denard. Is she sick? Huh? Okay. All right. Mark her excuse. Next. The Reverend Lily Dykes. She's where? All right. Mark excuse. The Reverend Oscar Gaines. Oscar Gaines. All right, excuse. The Reverend Louise Smith Hill. The Reverend Annette Howard. The Reverend Dexter Mullen. The Reverend Janet Sands. The Reverend Marilyn Shields. Marilyn Shields, what church she belonged to? I don't have a church for her. She was absent last year. Elder, you know who any elders know who she is? Anybody know what church she came out of? All right, mark her absent. The Reverend Rebecca Smith. She's out of St. James Bradley. Oh, there she is. Reverend Sanders just said she is no uh, longer with the AME. Who's that? The Reverend Rebecca Smith. She's withdrawn. All right. Next. The Reverend Gwendolyn Watkins. Gwendolyn Watkins. What church she belonged to? She's on Macon South. Mm -hmm. 
Who's the pastor? Willie Card? Reverend Card? I had to go where? Take, take your mask down. All right, marker excuse. All right, next. The Reverend Carl Wilson. That ends the local elders. Any local elders whose name was not called. All right. All of the superannuates in the Macon Conference, please stand. All of the superannuates. All the superannuates. Michelle Williams, when did you become a superannuate? She only stood because her name was called while she was out. All right. Mark her present. Yes, sir, my friend. You right with Brother Smith? All right, mark him present. Yes, my friend. Reverend Brown, how you doing? I'm doing tolerably well. All right. Mark Simone Jones present. Any, any superannuals here? Any supernumeraries here? All right. How you doing? Pretty good. Give us the name. Yes. Now you said you did what now? Well, supernumerary has to do with those um, you have not retired, but you're basically somebody's better you're on leave. So you're in good standing. You're in good standing. All right. All right. Thank you so very much. All right. Yes. And which what are you, uh, the supernumerary? What's the name? Helen Jester. Mary Helen Jester. Are you a supernumerary? Thank you so much. All right. All right, all of the component heads. Call the roll. Lay Organization President, Brother George Gordon. Conference WMS President, Sister Gwendolyn Bird. Sister Bird, all right. Conference, y Conference YPD Director, Sister Kisma Shannon. Sister Shannon here. Young People's Division President, Sister Frances O'Brien. Machine School, excuse. Director of Christian Education, Sister Latrellis Dent. Conference Sons of Allen President, Brother Charles Gordon. Conference Charles Gordon. Conference DMC, Brother Ashley Ballard. Conference Women in Ministry President, Reverend Sandra Simmons. Minister Spouses, Brother Leslie Harper. Conference Church School <coughs> Superintendent, 
Sister Katie Williams. That ends the roll, Bishop. All right. All of the lay delegates from churches on the Macon East. <laughs> Macon East District, will you please stand? All the delegates from churches on the Macon East District, please stand. Rodney Elder Rickard, are you certified that these are the duly elected delegates from the churches on the Macon East District? I do certify that you are the duly elected delegates from the local churches on the Macon East District. To this session of the annual conference, you are entitled to participate in all of the discussions and to vote on any matter which comes before this session of the Macon Conference. Let me thank you for making the time and the sacrifice to come and be with us. Thank you so very much. You may be seated. All of the delegates from the local churches on the Macon North District, will you please stand? Rodney Elder Smith, you certify that these are the duly elected delegates from the churches on the Macon North District. I do certify that you are the duly elected delegates from the churches on the Macon North District to this 139th session of the Macon Annual Commerce. You are entitled to participate in any discussion and vote on any issue which comes before this session of the Annual Conference. Let me thank you for making the time and the sacrifice to come and be with us. You may be seated. All of the delegates from the churches on the Macon South District, would you please stand? Rodney Elder Williamson, do you certify that these are the duly elected delegates from the churches on the Macon South District? I do hereby certify that you are the duly elected churches from the Macon South District to this 139th session of the Macon Annual Conference. You are entitled to participate in any discussion, in any vote which comes before this session of the Annual Conference. Let me thank you for making the sacrifice and committing the time to come and be a part of this annual conference. You may be seated. Bishop Thank Jackson. You. Yes, sir. Elder Wicker. Oh, question about uh, the proper procedure, please. Okay, we have here a very faithful young lady, Reverend Colette Lewis. She transferred from the Michigan Conference to the Georgia Conference, but now she wants to be a part of the Macon, Georgia Annual Conference. She's, where is she now? Where are you now? I'm at St. Paul, Macon. Okay, and which conference were you in? Michigan Conference. Michigan? Yes. You're an itinerant deacon or elder? Yeah, deacon, sir. Okay, did you ask Bishop White to give you a transfer? Yes, sir. I have a letter. Um, <laughs> it's signed by him, Bishop. All right. Give that to Ms. Brown. Where is Ms. Brown? Okay. All right. And give me the name again. Colette Lewis Mitchell. Colette Lewis Mitchell, you are now a member of the 6th Episcopal District and the Macon Annual Conference. Please add her name to the roll among the itinerant deacons. Thank you. Thank you. Bless your heart, thank Bishop. You. Thank you. All right. Thank you so very much. All right. Elms, are we ready for the organization of the annual conference? Ready, Bishop. Yes, sir, Reverend Jacobs. Is she an itinerant? Yes, she is. Deacon or elder? Deacon. Did she ask Bishop Green for a transfer? Yes, sir. All right, bring the, bring the transfer and give it to Sister Brown. Sister Brown, wave your hand. All right, state the name again, Sister Jacobs. 
Reverend Diggins, you're hereby transferred to the 60th Episcopal District and a member of the Macon Annual Conference. Please add her name to the roll. You're a deacon or elder? Itinerant deacon. All right. Is there anybody else? Anybody else feel like you just want to come on in? All right. All right, elders. Good afternoon, Bishop Jackson, Supervisor Jackson, and the pastors and delegates and visitors of the 139th session of the Macon, Georgia Annual Conference. We submit the following for approval. The administrative staff, Secretary Reverend Maria Gordon, Assistant Secretary Reverend Simone Jones, Statistician Sister Latrellis Dent, Marshals, Brother Charles Gordon, Chief Marshal, Sister Maria Lamar, the Supervisor's Marshal, Reverend Wayne Griffin, Reverend Ralph Searcy, Brother Theodore Jackson. All right, you heard the recommendations for the administrative staff and the marshals of the conference. What's the pleasure of the body? Second. I proudly move and second. You heard the motion. All in favor will say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Motion is carried. The administration staff and the marshals are in place. All right, next. For the finance committee, these are the persons who are being considered uh, placing the nomination. Reverend Dr. Kevin Moore, Reverend Dr. Johnny Cook Jr., Reverend Charlie Hicks III, Reverend Naisha Davis, Reverend Anthony Dixon, Brother James Greyer, Sister Yvonne Baker, Sister Smithika, Smithiki Norman. All right. Any young adults on the finance committee? Yes, sir, Bishop. All right. You heard the recommendation for the Finance Committee. What's the pleasure of the body? I move. I'm, I'm readiness, Bishop. Uh, let me get a second first. Is there a second? All right, unreadiness, Elder Wicker. Charlie Hicks' name is Charlie Hicks the second. Brother Hicks, you don't want to be moved up to the third? <laughs> 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 With that correction, are you ready for the question? Question. All in favor will say aye. Aye. Ayes have it, motion is carried. All right, next. These are the persons that um, are submitted for consideration to be conference trustees. The Reverend Lavonia Franklin, Reverend Dr. Kevin Moore, Reverend Dr. Johnny Cook, Jr., Reverend Anthony Dixon, Reverend Charlie Hicks, uh, and that will be the second for correction. Reverend Simone Jones, Reverend Maria Gordon, Reverend Salathia Coleman, Reverend Jacqueline Craig, Reverend Wayne Griffin, Reverend Ralph Searcy, Dr. Sylvia Moore, Sister Gwendolyn Bird, Brother Ashley Ballard, Brother Charles Gordon, Sister Katie Williams, Judge William Hughley, Sister Edith Williams, Sister Shirley Washington, Brother George Gordon, Sister Samiki Norman, and Satiki Norman, I'm sorry, and Sister Latrellis Dent. All right, you heard the recommendations for the conference trustees. What's the pleasure of the body? I proud move and second. You've heard the motion. Are you ready for the question? Question. All in favor will say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. And the motion is carried. The conference trustees have been elected. Thank you so very much, elders. All right. I my sisters, I do hereby declare that the 139th session of the making conference is now in session. Dr. Moore. All 
I move and second that the electronic schedule be the order of the day. Mr. Pleasure of the body. Is there a second? All right. All in favor will say aye. Eyes have it, and the motion is carried. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry. Good morning. How are you? Good afternoon. All right. Marker present. Yes, ma'am. Marker present. Reverend Selena Clark, Mark are present. Reverend Clark, were you here this morning? Reverend Clark, were you here this morning? All right. Yes. Sister Campbell, stand up and give me your first name. Yes. Next to you, yeah, you. Uh, Collins. You are attending deacon or elder? Elder. You're not on the road. Where'd you come from? Uh, it's a paperwork thing. It's, it's a paperwork thing. It's uh, somewhere in your office. We can talk about it later when you have time. No, no, no. Where, where'd you come from? I'm originally with Turner Chapel. I've been with uh, Camp Hope now since 2019. Turner Chapel where? AME and Marietta. If you were in Marietta, you were in another conference. Right. But because I'm with Camp Hope, I just decided to come here anyway. No, 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 let me say this. If you were in the Atlanta North Georgia Conference, the only way you can become a part of the Megan Conference is I have to give you a transfer. Right, and the paperwork was put in a while ago, and something happened. I was told it was headed to your office. Hold on, you're a local? Yes, sir. Okay, let me explain. The process for locals is different. Now, hear me carefully. You are a local at uh, Turner Chapel in Marietta. And you belong now to Mount Hope? Camp Hope, yes, sir. Camp Hope? Yes, sir. Then where's Reverend Bright? Reverend Bright, stand up. You have to get Reverend Bright, who is the pastor of Turner Chapel in Marietta, to provide a letter. And the, who's the pastor at Camp Hope? Dr. Martin. Reverend Martin here. Uh, and Reverend Martin, both of them have to submit a letter to the Board of Examiners requesting that you be a local for Camp Hope. Both of them have to concur. Then the Board of Examiners makes a recommendation to the annual conference that your local status will now be at Camp Hope as opposed to Turner Chapel. Yes, sir. I understand when you're local, you don't go from one church to the other. Correct. Because until that happens, you are no longer a minister. You are, again, a layperson. The pastor of the church you're leaving, the pastor of the church you're going to, both have to submit a letter to the board of examiners in that conference requesting that you be made a local for that particular church in the annual conference, and the bishop have to approve it. All right? Yes, sir. From my understanding, that was done, but apparently the ball has dropped somewhere. Well, let me say this, Ms. Brown, we don't have, Reverend Bright, did you just write a letter? Okay, well, if you haven't written a letter. Okay, then the ball wasn't dropped, the ball wasn't started. So we will get it, we will get it done. Uh, how long have you been at Camp Hope? Three years. All right. Uh, who's the elder of that Camp Hope? All right. Um, then we need to make sure that these pastors get this, um, because unless that's done, then then uh, you know she's not a local. So we'll all right. I so you have to take the initiative. You have to get with Reverend. Have you ever met Reverend Bright? Okay. 
Then you have to get Reverend Bright to write a letter on behalf of Turner Chapel. Then you have to get to Pastor Mount Hope to the both of them write a letter. All right? All right, thank you. All right. Very good. Now, brothers and sisters, we have some folk here who desire and aspire to serve both the uh, state and the church, church and state. They've come to address the Macon Conference. So I'm going to give them a chance to do that. I'm going to start with those since the primary in Georgia is May the 24th. Let me simply say to you, early voting has already started. I want as many of us as can to vote early. It's a peculiar time in Georgia. So you need to vote early. They're making it hard for Negroes to vote, so you got to vote early. They're making it hard for black folk to vote, you got to vote early. Elections have consequences, which we're finding out now. All right, we have Sister Hatcher with us today. She aspires to serve in the United States Congress from the 10th Congressional District. They've got a primary in the 10th District. They've got candidates in the Republican and Democratic Party uh, who want to serve, represent that district. There will be a new congressperson in the 10th district because the present congressperson is running for secretary of state. And let me just say this, and I'll, you know, I'll say it again. The present congressperson in that district is absurd because he claims that what happened on January 6th was a typical tourist day at the Capitol. I don't know any tourists go to the Capitol with knives and bats and flagpoles and beating people upside the head. I don't think that's a typical tourist day at the Capitol. And Sister Hatcher wants to represent the 10th District. Hatcher, come on and address the conference. Somebody get her a microphone. All right. Right over here, Sister. Mm -hmm. She's also a minister, y'all. Welcome, my friend. Awesome. Bishop, thank you again for allowing me the opportunity to address this congregation. Again, my name is Phyllis Hatcher, and I am a candidate for the United States House of Representatives that covers the Congressional 10th District. Now, if I may ask, is there anyone in here that lives in the 10th Congressional District? Can you stand for me, please? Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you all so much. Now, if you do not know which Congressional District that you live in, please go to your Secretary of State website, and they will let you know. But this is the deal, you all. Today is, well, yesterday started early voting. And the primary is from, uh, from, from May 2nd until May 24th, and early voting stops on May 20th. Now, there have been a lot of laws that has been changing uh, in regard to our voting process, which is the absentee ballot, for one, and if, you, and if you have not addressed yourself with that, please do so. Again, please do not wait until the last day to go vote, simply because your precinct may have changed even though we are talking about uh, platforms as we move along, but my main concern is, is to make sure that you are aware of your voting processes. Uh, that is the most important part, you all. Our laws have been put in place to suppress our vote, and you all know how hard it was for us to get, as the people of color, to get a right to vote. So we wanted to make sure that we continue our processing on having that right to vote, so therefore, make sure that you know where your precincts are coming up for the election time and go early and don't wait and go on the day of because you may not be able to vote at that time. But just to give you just a brief synopsis, a brief synopsis on my platform, it's simple. It's for common people. It's for affordable health care. 
is for a living wage than also for our voting rights. So I won't go into total details, but please go to my uh, website, which is hatcherforcongress.com. You will see all of the issues there that I am concerned about, but those are the three main things that I am totally concerned about, is that affordable health care, but we'll all be able to afford health care. And we need to raise this uh, living wage to $15 an hour. And I will be supporting John Lewis's voting rights bill. Again, Bishop, thank you so much for, um, for giving me this time to stand before you all. I know that you all are in your all's conference, but you all, I'm telling you, voting is so, so, so important at this election time. Bishop had mentioned earlier that Jody Heiss has been in this seat for the last, I could say 20, at least 10 to 20 years. And there has not been any money sent into this uh, 10th congressional district. But not only that, you all, as you know, that Georgia has 16 United States House representatives, and we only have six. That was John Lewis at one time, but now it's Nakima Williams, it's Hank Johnson, Lucy Macbeth, Carolyn, Mc Carolyn Bordeaux, Sanford Bishop, and then David Scott. As you may also not know, that these lines has been redrawn, so they have put two Democratic candidates to fight against one another, and that's Carolyn Bordeaux and Lucy Macbeth. So we are standing to lose another seat. Now, when I'm elected, of course, I would take one of those seats, which would be six again. But that lets you all know that we are still totally outnumbered. We would never be able to get the things that we want to have done until we start putting people in office that has our common goals and values. And that is a Democrat. Not saying that a Republican person cannot do good work, but they do not have the values of the common people. So you all, please, please, please go vote. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your neighbors to go vote, okay? And I want to say amen because I am an ordained pastor of the gospel. So when I say amen, that means that I'm confirming that what I am saying, okay? Amen. All right, thank you all so much, Bishop, and thank you for your time. Yes, sir, you're welcome, and go press your case. Now, y'all know how, y'all know when I'm supporting somebody. Whenever I support somebody, I give them money. <laughs> See me before you leave, I got it. I give some more right now, I'm going to give some more, so y'all... You know, this person always has a, a, a habit of showing up at the last minute, but at the right time. She must have ESP. Candidate for Secretary of State. Happens to be an AME preacher. Reverend D. Dawkins Hagler. Jesus. Good afternoon, everybody. It is a pleasure to be with y'all today. I'm just getting off the road, literally, and coming in. This has been a journey. So thank you, Bishop Jackson. I know you missed me today. I missed you. I know you did. Thank you. And so I love seeing all of you all down here in the Macon Conference. I am so excited about this particular leg of the journey because yesterday we had a debate, a televised debate. Did any of y'all see the televised debate yesterday with Leon for Secretary of State? None of you? That's okay, I'm gonna tell y'all about it anyway. So it was a great debate, and we were able to press our claim on why we should be the Secretary of State in Georgia. And one of the great things was they asked me a question about litigation and all the lawsuits that were being filed against the state of Georgia for suppressing the vote, and guess what I was able to say that nobody else on that stage was able to say? That the African Methodist Episcopal Church is a leader in all those lawsuits. See, Bishop? That's what I told them. And then everybody was excited about it. So I just want you to know that the AME Church leads the way in everything that we do that happens in the political life. And part of that is because we have a bishop in place who understood everything about social action before he came to Georgia and hit the ground running. So what do we have going on now? We have a law that's been passed this year along with the GBI that deals specifically with giving them the authority to be able to go in and do investigations. Let me tell y'all why that's important. 
we've already dealt with this back in 2010. So this is a this is not anything new. This is an old playbook. And if any of you all know anything about Quitman, Georgia, and the Quitman 10, these the people were arrested. Ten black women were arrested, charged with felonies because they registered people to vote and used advanced voter registration. What happened was they flipped the Republican school board in Quitman, put black women on the school board. The white Republicans said that this was voter fraud, sent it to the Secretary of State at that time, who was Brian Kemp, to determine whether or not that investigation was valid. He then did an internal investigation saying that it was enough evidence to say that these black women actually did something wrong and kept them in litigation for years on top of years on top of years. It took us about a good seven years to get everything cleared up. Now, just imagine, that had to be approved by the Secretary of State. Now, the law goes around the Secretary of State, so anybody can file charges now and say it's fraud, and it doesn't even have to have the Secretary of State to stamp it. So what do y'all think is getting ready to happen in Georgia? If they can't stop us from voting for Warnock and Ossoff or Stacey Abrams and D.Doc and Taylor, what are they going to do next? Put y'all in jail. So this thing is serious out here in these streets, and they don't like it. And they don't want the strongest person to be the Secretary of State, but we got news for them. What they've never seen is the AME Church in full force. So I'm counting on y'all. I need y'all, I need y'all to do three things. I got it in the right order this time. The first thing I need y'all to do is the literature. Where's the literature, Denisha? It's usually passed out. Uh, I need the marshals to pass it out. So the first thing I need everybody to do is to take this picture, take a picture of my card. So take a picture of this card and put it on your social media if you have social media. Because you got to let people know that I'm running. Because a lot of people don't know I'm running. As a matter of fact, I've been doing phone banking for the last couple of days, and people don't even know it is a race going on or that early voting has started. Okay? So the first thing we got to do is we got to tell everybody that I'm running. The second thing we're going to have to do is you're going to have to pray. I need y'all to pray. I need y'all to pray mightily. So we got to share, pray. Y'all got to get some money. But lastly, you got to go vote, okay? So that's a couple of steps going on. So it's actually four steps and not three. Share this on social media. Pray, give some money, and vote, because I need y'all. This race is about the very defending of our democracy. I'm telling you all, else, we have been through a lot in this state. They are trying to take us back to a time we don't need to be in. People are not even addressing the issues. But one thing I will say about me being in the race, I was the last one to get in the race this time, and not all of the other four candidates have literally changed all their talking points to match mine. That's how powerful this situation is. So at least now they're talking about black folk when that was not the conversation a couple of months ago. Everything is about what's happening to us. So because we're the leaders, and I'm an AME, and I know how to lead from the front, I need y'all to lead from the front. Join me getting the message out so we can fight for our very democracy, because it is black voters that they're coming from. The state of Georgia now has two million black people registered to vote. Yesterday, 26,000 people had advanced voted. In 2018, only 9,000 people had advanced voted on day one. So what does that mean? That means that the Republicans realize, because it's mostly in Republican counties, their vote turnout has turned up significantly. So they're coming for us, so we better be ready to come back for them. So I need y'all to do this. Be ready, don't talk about it, be about it, and remember to vote for D. Dawkins Hagler for Georgia's Secretary of State. Thank you, Bishop. All right. She says she needs some money. She got some already, I guess she wants some more. All right. Anybody else here aspiring to run for a state office? All right. Now, my sisters and my brothers, in 2024, the General Conference will meet in Cincinnati, Ohio. We have a couple people here who desire to serve the church at a higher level. First, we have the Reverend Michael Bowie from the 11th Episcopal District. 
aspired to serve as one of the bishops of the church. When I uh, was in seminary, and they sent me to supply at St. John on Coleman Street in Atlanta. He was, I think, at Mars Brown College and came and was my assistant at St. John. And I was doing a fine job pastoring in the 11th Episcopal District. Reverend Michael Bowie wants to be one of the bishops of the church. Reverend Bowie, come and press your case. Good afternoon, Bishop Jackson, Supervisor Jackson, to the presiding elders of this conference, to the pastors of this conference, and to all of the laypersons and missionaries and, and laity that make up this great Macon, Georgia conference. Thank you, Bishop. Not only did I have a great opportunity to serve there with you at St. John Coleman Street, but when you left to go back home, you recommended to the bishop that I supply that church for two weeks, and I enjoyed my two weeks as pastor. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Michael Bowie. I'm a itinerant elder, and I serve in the 11th Episcopal District. I currently serve as pastor of the Mount Vernon AME Church in Miami Gardens, Florida. When I was assigned to that church, the mortgage at that church was more than $9.9 .9 million. Within the years that I have served that congregation, we have reduced that mortgage down to $5.2 million. That is not the only thing that I've done. I've also built the church that we now enjoy in Daytona Beach, Florida. I built that church from the ground up expanded the property of that congregation. Now they're more than just a church, they are now a full campus. I come to you today offering myself to you as a candidate for bishop. Throughout my ministry and every place that I've been blessed to serve, servant leadership has been my mantra. Everywhere I've gone, I've made it better. Everywhere I've been able to serve and blessed to serve. I've taken that situation, grown the people, grown the ministry, expanded ministry in the communities in which I have been blessed to live and serve. I come to you today because I believe with the experience that I have gained over these many years that I now know how to administer the business of the church to move us from a church that still holds on to the old traditions of our church of how to raise money. I have made it a mark in the churches that I have been blessed to serve to look at stewardship with new eyes. We are now at a point in our ministries where money is scarce, but people are still there. And we wanna be able to move people to a place of not getting bogged down with issues of raising money. We want people to enjoy ministry. So I come to you today, not only with a track record, I come to you today with a heart for social action, with a heart for administration, with a heart for leadership. And I pray that you will consider me, along with all of the other candidates that are offering themselves as bishop for 2024. God bless you, Macon, Georgia Conference. I pray you have a great conference this week, and may the Lord continue to bless the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Thank you for your time. Then we have also from the 11th District. This is Florida Day in the Making Conference. 
Reverend Jimmy Williams, who aspired to serve the church. Come on up, Reverend Williams. I believe you're running for Judicial Council. Yes, sir, coming for, he's also the secretary of the Turner Board. All right, Reverend Williams. Thank you so much, Bishop, to this wonderful aggregation of people, to, the, to Bishop Jackson and Supervisor Jackson, to the presiding elders, and to the delegates of this wonderful uh, Macon Annual Conference. I come today, my name is Jimmy L. Williams III. I come today on a divine assignment to solicit your prayers and your support. I've been pastoring in the AME Church now for over 20 plus years. As I've been pastoring, I've, I've built parsonage, moved on, and every church I've served, I've paid off debt. The current church I serve now, been there 12 years. We've done some mighty things. I pastor in a place called Miami in Liberty City. Very tough place, but a very fruitful place. And I believe I can inspire and, and hope that we can provide leadership, uh, continual leadership on the Judicial Council. I ask you of your support. I ask you for your prayers. I ask you for your vote. I believe as I've served in the office as a, as a political candidate for eight years in the city of Homestead in Miami-Dade County, that I understand legislation. I understand the law. I understand what we can do. I understand that the Judicial Council, currently, I currently serve as an alternate on the Judicial Council. And I'm looking to do some great things to be fair. I'm looking to be uh, committed. And also, I am looking for uh, people to uh, have some compassion in their hearts. All of us have gone through struggles and, and, and tired. But guess what? The Lord is still good. The Lord has blessed us mightily. And so I think I'm offering myself up today. And I need you. I can't do it without you. We're stronger together than we are apart. And so as I offer myself up, Bishop Jackson, for, for Judicial Council, I want everybody to keep this in mind. Yes, I look young. Yes, I look like I just started voting. But I've been on the battlefield for the Lord a long time. And I've had some great friends in the 6th Episcopal District. I've had mentors. And I'm here to ask you for your support. Thank you, Bishop Jackson, for allowing me to take this moment in time to tell the people a little bit of something about Jimmy L. Williams III. God bless you, and have a wonderful conference. Thank you so much, Reverend Williams. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Any other candidates here running for anything? Come on, Reverend Simone. Somebody said they were running for heaven but not ready to be elected. Good afternoon, Bishop. I am a, currently serving on the Putnam County Board of Education District 2. Um, I have been there now. This will be my 20th year, mm. and I am up for re-election. And this year, I have competition. I have uh, two Republicans and an independent write-in. So I'm asking all of uh, persons that reside in District 2 in Putnam County if you would please lend your support so we can go back and continue the work that we have started. Thank you so much. Y'all remember Reverend Simone Jones. Now, before I call for the Board of Examiner's report, let me say this. You know, one of the things um, our church has got to do is to help our people uh, on issues that are before us. I have been bombarded. Porter called me 6.30 this morning, like I have that on my mind at 6.30 in the morning, um, to add, and asked me what was the AME Church's position as related to the abortion issue. And it's unfortunate that our church has not taken a formal position. And I don't think most of our folk uh, have any idea of uh, where we ought to be. 
with that, let me say there's a couple of things. One, uh, if the Supreme Court is going to rule uh, the way this leaked um, paper came out, uh, that they're going to abolish Roe versus Wade, we are putting our country at a position that is really very frightening. And I say frightening because the wording of the decision uh, not, does not only deal with Roe versus Wade. The major thing a decision says is that Roe versus Wade, or I should say abortion, and other issues ought to be left up to state legislatures. Let me simply say to you, elections have consequences. Elections have consequences. The biggest consequence of the 2016 election is what's happening with the decision of Roe versus Wade. That is the greatest consequence of the 2016 election. The man who won the 2016 election had a chance to appoint three people to the United States Supreme Court. Lifetime appointments. Brothers and sisters, that is a very unfortunate situation. And we do not realize how important it is for us to vote. And let me tell you now the strategy that they have for this election is to discourage and frustrate black people so they will not vote. The argument's going to be that blacks turned out in such large numbers in 2020, and all these promises were made, and none of them were kept. And so therefore, blacks are supposed to be frustrated and discouraged and say we're not going to turn out to vote in 2022. That is the strategy. I hope we will not be so gullible as to fall for that strategy. Because the reason none of the promises made regarding blacks in, in uh, 2020 have been achieved is because they have not supported any of them. If you take a look at the voting rights legislation, the Voting Rights Act, the last time it was uh, approved again was in 2006. The president in 2006 was George Bush. It was the Voting Rights Act was reapproved under George Bush, a Republican president. And the vote was 98 to nothing. Not a single senator voted against renewing the Voting Rights Act. So tell me, why is it that in 2021, you cannot find one single solitary Republican to vote for voting rights? Not one. And the reason for that is to discourage, to suppress, to frustrate black voters. Following the killing of George Floyd, they introduced the George Floyd Police Reform Act, which was supposed to reform policing in this country. It has not passed. Not one single Republican, including a black senator from South Carolina, voted to pass the George Floyd Policing Reform Act. The intent is for blacks to get frustrated, depressed. Nothing for us has passed. No, there's no accident that it has not passed. 
The reason they passed all these voting laws is to punish blacks for voting in 2020. It's to punish us because we turned out to vote in 2020. And let me say this again. Blacks in Georgia, you, you have no idea how much the country owes us for our vote in 2020. The United States of America owes black voters in Georgia. The only reason Katanji Brown Jackson is on the United States Supreme Court today is because of black voters in Georgia. If blacks had not voted in Georgia, Joe Biden would not be president. He would not have been able to nominate Katanji Brown Jackson. If, if Georgia did not elect the first black United States Senator, Raphael Warnock, and the first Jewish Senator from Georgia, John Ossoff, control of the United States Senate would not have changed. Katanji Brown Jackson would not have had the votes to get confirmed. So the country owes black voters in Georgia. And so I just want to say to us, I hope we will not be so gullible. I just say I'm not going to vote because it don't mean nothing. Elections have consequences. And you're going to have now, I am so afraid and concerned, you're going to start again with these back alley abortions, people risking their health. You mean to tell me a woman who gets raped and becomes pregnant cannot get an abortion, got to carry the baby of the dastardly deed that raped her? But brothers and sisters, your vote is important. And so I hope if there's nothing else that we learn from what's going on now, it is that our vote does matter. 2022 election, our democracy is on the line. Now, let me just say this too. I suspect that by the time we get to November, uh, you are going to hear me call a whole bunch of names. But let me say, I don't get upset at what people call me. You are not what people call you. You are what you answer to. And so I'm going to do everything I possibly can to make sure the 22 election is beneficial for our people. And I'm just asking that you'll help me. I'm asking you to help yourself. The eyes of the nation are going to be on Georgia. We have a governor's race and a race for the U.S. Senate. We have some House races uh, where Sister Reverend Hatcher is. Uh, that's a chance to change one house seat. Um, and so it's important. And so I'm hoping that you will help. And I want y'all to know it's going to be a very, very, very hard fight. And the reason it's important for you to vote early is because they're going to do everything they possibly can to make sure your vote doesn't count. They're going to claim you didn't dot an I, that you didn't put the hyphen in your name, that the curve of your writing does not look like it does on another. All of that is subjective. And so you're going to need to vote early. Please, please vote early. For the primary early voting started yesterday. Our planning meeting is the first 
was it the first Thursday and Friday in uh, June in Columbus, Georgia. Now, I'm going all out this go around. On that Thursday, uh, that Wednesday, well, that Thursday, uh, I've invited Stacey Abrams, who's going to be the speaker at 10 o'clock on that Thursday morning. I want us to pack the place out. I'm trying to get Raphael Warnock. Um, I want them to talk about the AME Church. Um, you know, I want them to talk about us. You know, them A and me, they too much into politics. No, we just in the kingdom work. You see? Jesus says, your kingdom come on earth. That's what we about. And I'm trying to keep some demonic folk out of office. So that's where I am. All right, enough said about that. Board of examiners, please. Board of examiners. Board of Examiners. We're going to ask all the candidates to come to the front where Doc, Reverend Carlos Young is. All candidates, beginning with the class of admissions. Bishop Jackson and the 139th session of the Macon, Georgia Annual Conference. This is the report of the Board of Examiners. The Board of Examiners met via Zoom video conference call on January 13, 2022 to organize for the 2021-2022 conference course of study. It was decided that each level of candidates would participate in one joint class session. Each class level would have a chairperson to ensure that candidates are informed of the requirements for each class level. Uh, Reverend Gordon, you can just go to the candidates. Yes, sir. Itinerant orders, class of admissions, Quintarius Trammell, Brother Trammell, come all the way up to the front. Come on back in there. Quintarius Trammell is 22 years of age, single, and a member of, George, of the Georgia National Guard. He is an active member of New Greater Allen Temple AME Church, where Reverend Charlie Hicks the second is his pastor. Brother Trammell is a high school graduate and has expressed his interest in furthering his education. Due to his work schedule, Brother Trammell attended less than half of the classes and did not take all of his final exams. The board recommends that he remain in the class of admissions. Brother Trammell, how are you feeling? 
pretty good, Bishop. How are you? Pretty good. What makes you feel the Lord has called you to ministry? Well, the Lord came to me after I was playing basketball, actually. I was taking a shower, and he gave me a vision, that, and the room just turned white, and I can only hear the voice of God just Right. Tell me what you're doing to respond to God's call upon your life. Can you repeat that? Tell me why you attended less than half the classes. Uh, with my work schedule and uh, because of drill, Bishop. Bishop, where do you work? Right now, I work at Kim Opera, and on the weekends, I was a contractor with Burger King, serving their grills and fries. You're 22? Yes, sir. You in school? No, sir. Why you haven't gone to school? Well, I've been, uh, I just got out of the Army about a year ago, and that's, I mean, active duty. And right now I'm just trying to. Why are you going to Georgia National Guard? It was a part of my contract when I went active duty this year. What do you do at Greater Allen Town? Uh, I serve as a lay member. I assist Pastor Hicks with everything he needs done. The board recommends that you remain. Now, they say have you in the class on admission. But the fact of the matter is you can't, get admitted, you can't be in the class on admissions until you've been admitted. And so they're not even recommending that you be admitted. Um, tell me how you perceive your ministry going forward. I just want to be stand between heaven and earth and do God's will and lead people to Christ as often as I can. Why do you have to be ordained to do that? I don't feel like you have to be ordained to do God's work. Has your, pastor, has your pastor talked to you about ministry? Yes, sir. What has he told you? He told me that it's very serious this year. Mm -hmm. You believe him? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Your work schedule may not change. So how are you going to prepare for ministry if your work schedule doesn't change? I'll make a way, Bishop. Did he make a way this year? <laughs> no, sir, he didn't. No, the reason I'm saying it is because really it's going to be up to you. You have to decide what's more important. You have to decide whether this ministry. Is that important to you? Listen to Paul and the letter he wrote to his son in the ministry, Timothy. Make full proof of your ministry. Stir up the gift of God that is within you. How do you intend to make full proof of your ministry? By fulfilling God's will of my life this <coughs> And what is God's will for your life? To lead people to him as many as I can. Some people are going to think I'm being too hard on you. They're going to think I'm being too hard. The bishop ought to know better. When I, uh, <coughs> when I started... And I went to my first annual conference. Had to go before the board of examiners. There was a minister by the name of Walter Wayman Clark. I didn't like him. I didn't like him because of the way he spoke to me when I went before the board of examiners. 
later on, I loved him. Because what he said to me was one of the best things ever been said to me in my life. He said, Jackson, are you sure God called you? I said, yes. Are you convinced you want to be a minister? I said, yes. Is there anything else you can do? I said, yes. And then he said these words to me I have never forgotten. He said, you said God called you? I said, yes. You said there are other things you can do? I said, yes. His response to me was, if there are other things you can do, go do it. Because his thing was, if God has called you to ministry, that ought to be the priority of your life. I didn't understand then what I understand now. People are not helping you if they don't push you to be the best you can for God. So I want to see you make full proof of your, I want your mind to be fixed. I want your mind made up. All right? Next year, I expect you to come back. And I don't want to see the same recommendation. I want Reverend Hicks to be hard on you. If God has put something in you, he wants to get it out of you. All right? All right, you're a young guy with a lot of potential. God has a plan for your life. Don't let nobody, including me, mess up the plan that God has for your life. All right, thank you. Thank you, Bishop. All right, next. Brandy Bailey. Brandy Bailey is 42 years of age, married, and is employed at NECO Social Services. She is an active member of Texas A&E Church in Edenton, Georgia, where the Reverend Simone Jones is the pastor. She has earned a bachelor's degree in criminal justice from St. Leo's University. Sister Bailey has completed the class for first year studies with an overall average of 95. The Board of Examiners recommends that she be passed on to the second year of studies. Sister Bailey, how are you feeling? I'm good, Bishop. How are you doing today? Huh? How are you? I'm good. All right. How's the church coming? Texas needs the, the building. The building. Oh, we're we working. We working. Hoping to be in there this year. I'm hoping to come dedicate that church. Amen. 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 Okay. We, we, we'll be glad to have you. All right. All right, so you're saying God has called you to itinerant ministry. Yes, sir. You know what itinerant means? Travel, sir. Travel. You're willing to travel for the Lord's sake? Yes, sir. Where do you live? I live in Edenton, Georgia. Suppose you go through this process and get ordained, and some bishop has the audacity they say that after talking with the Lord, the Lord had decided you ought to be sent to Valdosta. How do you feel about that? I have to go where the Lord sends me, Bishop, but I'll be in prayer with you before you send me. I think that's good sense. <laughs> I think that makes a lot of sense. All right. Now, you are, uh, you have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Yes, sir. What do you feel about theological preparation? Um, I've already been in contact with uh, Ms. Aletha Smoot with Payne Seminary. I have completed the application. I just spoke with the elder earlier today and my pastor. You uh, spoke with who? The elder, elder, elder Wicker earlier today um, for a letter of recommendation. Why do you want to go to pain? Why do I want to go to pain? Well, after last year of speaking with you, Bishop, 
I went back and I did more research information and I encourage my children to attend HBCUs. So I thought about it. If I can encourage my children to attend HBCUs, then mom should follow suit. And I was asking why not Turner? Why not Turner? It's in Georgia. I did not research Turner. Uh -oh, did what? You? I did not. <laughs> I did not research Turner. I looked at ITC and I looked at Payne. Turner, ITC that, is Turner. See, yeah. they, they, there you go. Have you ever see Sanford and Son? Sanford and Son? I love Sanford and Son. Well, when you said you hadn't <laughs> considered Turner, I felt just like Fred Sanford. Fred Sanford, you. <laughs> say, Elizabeth, I'm coming. <laughs> see that lady over there? Who's that? That's oh, Dr. Amy don't, don't, Davis. Don't beat me up, please. She's the president <laughs> please, dean please. of Turner Seminary. I want you to talk with her. Talk I'm not, I'm not, saying, I'm not gonna tell you where to go. Okay. But I'm just saying it's in Georgia. Okay. You in Georgia. Mm -hmm. It's a HBCU. Right. I just think you ought to speak to Dr. Davis. I will. And I want you to I'm gonna say to you like I said to the brother. I just think you ought to be passionate about ministry. Yes, sir. And um, I remember when I spoke with you last year. Yes, sir. And so I'm looking, to, uh, I have great expectations for you. Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. And always strive to be and do your best for God. Amen. Yes, sir. And enjoy your ministry. Yes, sir. Enjoy your ministry. All yes, right? Sir. All right. The recommendation is that she be passed on the second year studies. Unless there is some objection, we'll consider this common consent. Any objection? All right, thank you so much, Sister Bill, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> and your pastor is going to help you on the way. All right, next. Second year of studies, Margaret Andrews is 61 years of age and employed as the department secretary for Atrium Health. Sister Andrews has completed her undergraduate studies at Columbia University and is a member of St. Paul Clinton, where the Reverend LaQuint Caswell is her pastor. I think that's me. Sister Andrews completed the second year with an overall grade of 95. The Board of Examiners recommends that she be enrolled in the ITC certificate program to further her ministerial growth and training. The Board of Examiners also recommends that Sister Margaret Andrews be elected and ordained itinerant deacon and pass on to the third year of study. So, Dan, you, how you feel? I'm doing great, Bishop. How are you? I'm doing tolerably well. Thank you. Um, do you know Dr. Amy Davis? Dr. Davis, no, I haven't. She's the dean of, Semin of Turner Seminary. Oh, yes. She's right behind you yes, over sir. there. Now, let me tell you, see, again, okay. I, I get to know people. Yes, sir. I try my best to get to know. I can almost read their mind. <laughs> Your pastor just read the report on me. Yes, sir. He wasn't happy with me yesterday. <laughs> Isn't that right, Reverend Caswell? Maybe, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't happy because I asked why they recommended you be ordained. Yes, sir. I want you to talk with Reverend Amy Davis. Yes, sir. Um, they're going to provide, Turner's going to provide a, a program for students. In fact, the record is that it was in this annual conference. Y'all had a number of people whose annual conference had approved to be ordained when Bishop Cummings was the bishop in this district. Yes, that had been 12 years at least, and they never got ordained. Yes, sir. And in order to get them ordained, I got with uh, Dr. Green, and he came up with a certificate program. Yes, sir. But they got ordained. Okay. Dr. Davis, is working on a certificate program 
and next year faculty be clergy and lay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes, sir, Dr. Davis. You can enroll now. Okay. Now, what I said to the board yesterday, and the reason I said I, uh, I would be inclined to go along with the recommendation is because of the fact if I approve you're getting your deacon's ordination, then I would hold that you would not get your elder's ordination until you finish your seminary preparation. Yes, sir. The other thing is age was a matter. Yes, sir. If you're an itinerant and your age now, I want to make sure you have as many years to serve as possible. Yes, sir. But I am a stickler for theological preparation. Yes, sir. The law that's in the discipline now about theological education, I wrote. I think the pulpit ought to be as prepared as the pews. Yes. So I want you to be the best. You know, God loves us the way we are. Yes, he does. But he doesn't want us to stay that way. That's right. So I want you to be the best you can be. Yeah, I will. I'm going to insist you be the best you can be. I will. And I really don't care whether they like it or not. <laughs> no, because I want you to be the best servant for God that you can be. I understand. All right? Mm -hmm. And so if you get in this certificate program, then I'll go along with this recommendation. Because if I go along with it, understand that whoever follows me I hope they will hold you off on your elders until you complete your theological preparation yes sir all right I think you I think you have a lot to offer yes sir where were you born I was born in Reynolds Georgia uh, you were Georgia regular uh, Georgia regular. I yes, see. Sir. <laughs> all right stand right over there we'll come back to the to you Shannon Jackson Okay, stand right over there. Thank you, uh, Rem Gordon. Sister Jackson, how are you feeling? I'm doing good, and you, Bishop? Now, I expect a whole lot from you. <laughs> Why I expect a whole lot from you? Last name, sir. I said you a Jackson. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. What do you do at Robbins Air Force Base? I work in accounting. Okay. You've been accepted at Regent University? Yes, sir. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right. Now, again, I'm a, let me say this. One of the things is we have, a, we have a personnel shortage in AMU Church. We have a personnel shortage. We really do not have enough prepared ministers for the churches we have in Georgia. We just don't have them. And the South Conference, they have about 78 appointments. About 38 of them are local ministers who are supplying those churches because we don't have the ministers for the churches. Southwest Conference is about one-fourth of the appointments. We have some in Georgia. Um, and so where do you live? Warner Robins, Georgia. Warner Robins. The fact of the matter is, if you were ordained now, I have a church I would send you to right now. See what I mean? Yes, sir. So, so if I go along with this recommendation that you be ordained, it would be because you're getting ready to start seminary in September? In August, yes, sir. In August? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I'm expecting a lot from you. I'm going to be here another two years, so I'll be checking you out. Yes, sir. What church you belong to? Uh, Bethel's Powersville. Yes. Is Craig is your pastor? Yes, sir. Does she push you? Absolutely. Where's Reverend Craig? All right. I want her to push you. Okay, I'm going to push you move now. <laughs> no, we have to produce some ministers. We really do. Yes, sir. 
I toss and turn at night because I don't have the ministers for the churches we have. And we have people who are retiring and don't have people to take those places. So we're depending upon you. All right, I wish you all the best, and next year I'm going to be checking you out. Yes, sir. All Thank right. you, Bishop. God bless you. Now, y'all ought to give a Jackson a better hand than that. And here's another one. This is Sonia Jackson, is that right? Sanja. Sanja Jackson, all right. And you at Robbins Air Force Base, too? Y'all sisters? No, sir. Oh. I see. What do you do at Robbins Air Force Base? I work with the tool box and all the tools. Work with who? I do uh, supply all the tools for the mechanics that work on the planes. All right. Reverend Moore is your pastor? Yes, he is. Does he push you? Uh, almost too much. I need you to talk. <laughs> he does. He does. He supports us. I mean, he really pushed us to be the best that we can be. You're enrolled at Payne Seminary? Yes, sir. Why you went to Payne? I mean, I'm just because asking. I talked to the elder, what's his elder? Stevenson. Elder Stevenson, and he was very nice, and he worked with me. Elder Dan Stevenson? Yes, sir. Kimberly McMichael, stand up. This is Reverend Kimberly McMichael. She pastors in the Georgia Conference in Savannah. Dan Stevenson's in that conference. So he's been getting all these folks to go to Payne. Mm -hmm. How you like Payne? I like it. You have any pain? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> I'm pressing on. All right. You serious about ministry? Yes, sir. You think the what kind of ministry is the Lord calling you to? Preaching. Mm -hmm. What about pastoring? Pastoring. Mm -hmm. Doctor Moore, you want to say anything about Sanja? Yes, sir. Sanja shows um, great potential. She's uh, very excellent in her teaching and preaching. Um, she's committed, especially in our women's ministry. She does an excellent job with that, and I'm just excited about her future. All right, you vouch for her? Yes, sir. If we ordain her a deacon, are you going to press her that she becomes her best moving towards her elders' ordination? Yes, sir. All right. All right, Sandra, you can step to the side here. Thank you. Now, y'all ought to give a Jackson a better hand than that. Uh, Reverend Sandra Simmons, you're preaching tonight. Go get ready to preach. You're excused. All right. All right. Next, this is Brother Walker. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Walker, how are you feeling? Great, Bishop, how are you doing? Pretty good. You're a finance manager? Yes, sir, at Hutchison Buick, James and Cadillac. Tell me what kind of ministry you think the Lord is calling you to? Um, teaching. Um, I strongly believe that, especially for my generation, um, I don't know if I'm the youngest one here, but especially with my generation, they need to be taught. Um, not only just in the house, but outside of the house as well. Where do you work as a finance manager? Hutchison, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac located on Albright Road. Well, right behind, that's not Albright, that's right behind Carabas and Outback. Mm -hmm. Reverend Chapman here. <laughs> Come here, Reverend Chapman, please. The members of the board, why are y'all remember, uh, I already know the answer, you know. That was my crazy question. Tell me something about Bro Walker. This piece of equipment on. Good evening to the conference. Brother Walker, he's a very strong 
young man. He's a very good man, great, good Christian-hearted man, and I believe he'll be a great asset for the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And he loved to go by the Book of Discipline. At first, uh, we had a little rocky road, but we got that straightened out, and I believe that he will be a great asset for the African Methodist Episcopal Church. We need strong young men like him, and he'll listen to his pastor. Most of all, listen to the Lord. When last time he preached? Uh, first Sunday for the, my pastor appreciation. He preached for your pastor appreciation? Yes, sir. He appreciated me too. <laughs> <laughs> now I see why you're saying all that good stuff. <laughs> Brother Walker, I say this with all sincerity. You are 23 years old. Yes, sir. The church desperately. Um, you know, um, I'm getting older. And to be frank with you, I'm starting to look back on my life. And um, I remember... I have a daughter, uh, I want y'all to pray for her really, she needs a lot of prayer. She sends out pictures on Facebook, now I didn't put myself on Facebook, she did. She's a daddy's girl, but she drives me up a wall. She puts pictures of me on Facebook when I was your age. And when I had a fro, <laughs> and I had it going on. And when I went to the New Jersey conference, I was the youngest pastor in the conference. And I thought I was it. And now some mornings when I look in the mirror, I say, oh my gosh, what happened? What happened is you will discover, I'm saying this because you will discover that time is filled with swift, swift transition. transition. Time is not a respecter of person. I uh, look at some of these ministers now, young bucks, it won't be long. <laughs> Kevin, it won't be long. <laughs> LaQuint, it won't be long. Tell them bright, it won't be long. They be just like us. I want y'all to know my hairstyle is the going trend. And I say this sincerely, and I feel it right now, in this class here today, um, one of the personnel shortages this church has in this class here they're recommending three people to be ordained all of them women um now, the problem is it used to be a time when the church was not fair to our sisters. The time is coming now. It used to be we couldn't find women for churches. The time is rapidly coming where we can't find men. So we need you. We need every able body man we can get. So I'm hoping that you will take seriously God's call on your life. Because if you don't, the AME Church is going to, and it shouldn't just say the AME Church, the black church itself, we have, whether you're Baptist, whatever, there is a shortage of men. The men are getting called, but they're not preparing themselves. The sisters 
are preparing themselves. It's all right. So I'm 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 pulling for you. And in fact, um, I'm pulling for y'all so much that I'm going to try to find a way to help underwrite some of the costs for theological education. Thank you, sir. I, um, I can never get out of my system how blessed I am. And I'll be honest with you, I am wonderfully blessed. When I started seminary, I didn't have the money to go. And I called Bishop Richard Allen Hildebrand, who had just been assigned to the first district. He came from Georgia. And I told him I didn't have any money. When he came to the first district, Bishop Hildebrand started the ministerial education fund. And the first district paid the expense, the tuition, for every student from the first district. I was the first one to benefit from it. I didn't have to pay a dime of tuition. I don't have any school loans. And so one of the things I am serious is that my last two years, I want to try to find a way to underwrite the theological costs of students going to seminary. All right? All right, Brother Walker, I'm going to be looking at you, and I wish you all the best. All right? Thank you so much. Step right over here. You're welcome. The next. Bishop, that ends the second year of study time. Okay. We're already third year, right? Yes, sir. Patricia Bryant Lavert is 58 years of age, married, and is employed as a director of foster care at Laurel Heights Hospital. She is the pastor of St. Philip's AME Church in Toonsboro and is currently matriculating as a junior in the Masters of Divinity program at Luther Seminary, St. Paul, Minnesota. The Board of Examiners recommends that she be passed on to the fourth year of studies. All right, Reverend LaVert, how are you feeling? I'm well, thank you, how are you? All right, how are you doing in seminary? I'm doing well. You had systematic theology yet? Humanist theology. Um, just getting my theology. All right. Together. You enjoying pre preparation? I am. All they're right. Good, and they're good to me there. Okay, very good. All right, I'm pleased with your progress. Thank you. And next year I hope to be able to ordain you an elder. I certainly hope so. Amen. Thank you. All right. All right. That's all, sir. And the recommendation is you be passed to the fourth year class. Unless there's no objection, we consider it common consent. All right, y'all give Sister LaVert a hand. All right, next. Local orders. Admissions, Terrence Kendrick. He is 40 years of age, single, and is employed by the Houston County Board of Education. He is an active member of Davis Chapel AME Church, where the Reverend Stevie Ward is his pastor. Pastor Ward has submitted a letter from the church in support of Brother Kendrick and the local ministry track. Brother Kendrick is a high school graduate and has completed the class of admissions with an overall average of 94. The board recommends that Brother Kendrick be admitted to the Macon, Georgia Annual Conference on the local ministry track and pass on to the first year of study. All right, next one. Ira T. Jones is 71 years of age, married and is a retired electrician and a member of Parker Chapel, where the Reverend Jada Sims is his pastor. Pastor Sims and the church has submitted a letter in support of Brother Jones becoming a licensed evangelist. Brother Jones has completed the class of admissions with an overall grade of 94. The board recommends that Brother Jones be licensed as an evangelist in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. All right, Reverend Ward here, Stevie Ward. Reverend Ward, come, come down, please. How you doing, Reverend Ward? Tell me about Terrence Kendrick. He's a uh, he's a good preacher. Uh, he's a he's a good young man. I've been knowing him um, 
since he was about, I think, 17, 18 years old, something like that. And uh, from my understanding, he pretty much been preaching since he was a boy, a young man. All right, he works hard in the church? He works hard in the church, yes, sir. All right. So you all are recommending him to be a local minister for Davis Chapel? Yes, sir. All right. All right, thank you. All right, Reverend Jada Sims. How are you, Reverend Sims? Good seeing you. Good to see you, sir. Tell me about Ira T. Jones. Sir, he, he is so outstanding. I don't have words to explain uh, this type of a person. I haven't met one since I've been in the AME Church. Um, that's dedicated as he is. Uh, his priorities are concerned around everything concerning God. I've never seen nobody like this, not even myself. And I want to say it would only take three words for me to sum this guy up, uh, that he's a passionate, innovative, and committed to do God's will. He's passionate about the word of God. You can talk to him in one minute. He's back on the word. He has nothing else, amen, that he's focused on. He's innovative, and the fact of the matter that he looks for ways to win souls for Christ. And he's committed. Uh, even during the, 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 the coronavirus um, uh, scare that we had, this man was, was on visual three times a week with prayer. Everybody dropped off in a year. This man is still going. So we can make sure that this virus does not come in on our members and kill them. Sir, if you pass him today, you will be doing an excellent thing. And you are an excellent bishop. God bless you. All right. Reverend Sims, you, you ought to be in marketing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Both of you all are coming for local ministry. The reason I call on your pastors is because the only way you can be ordained a local minister is the pastor in the local church must request the conference to ordain you. I want you all to keep on pre in preparation. And I look forward to being able to ordain you as a local minister, you as a conference, as an evangelist for Parker Chapel. All right? Any questions for me on anything? All right, I wish both of you all the best. Be faithful and diligent. All right? Give my hand. All right, next. Second year studies, Carla Ingram Green is 67 years of age and a member of St. Paul, where the Reverend Dr. Kevin Moore is her pastor. Sister Ingram has several degrees to include a Master's of Divinity. Sister Ingram is active in a church and attends class, and attended class, but was excused from the finals due to having completed the Master's of Divinity. The Board of Examiners recommends that she be elected and ordained local deacon and passed on to the third year of studies. All right, next one. Mary Waller is 67 years of age and a member of St. Paul AME, where the Reverend Dr. Kevin Moore is her pastor. Sister Waller holds a Master's of Divinity and a Doctorate of Ministry from Liberty University. Sister Waller was exempt from the finals due to completing seminary. The Board of Examiners recommends that she be elected and ordained local deacon and passed on to the third year of studies. Next. Wanda, West, Wanda Smith West is 69 years of age and a member of Stewart Chapel AME Church where the Reverend Lavonia Franklin is her pastor. Sister West holds a doctorate in education and has held many positions in education. She currently serves as a consultant for Middle Georgia College. Sister West attended classes with an overall average of 95. The Board of Examiners recommends that she be elected an ordained local deacon and passed on to the third year of studies. Um, you all, 
bring some great memories to me. And you're really extremely unusual. And I say that because um, when I pastored St. Matthew Church in Owens, New Jersey, I had two locals on my ministerial staff. Both of them, even though they were locals, had Master of Divinity degrees. And they made me look good. Yes, sir. Reverend Shirley Roberts had her Master's of Divinity in counseling. She did all the marriage counseling and stuff for me. She did a phenomenal job. She made me look good. I had uh, the Reverend Mary Times, and she went and started a prison ministry. Mm. We had one of the finest prison ministries anywhere in the state of New Jersey. It was a phenomenal ministry. One of the things uh, I feel bad about, um, I went to the prison once with them. And it sounds funny, but it wasn't funny that night. I went out there one Sunday night with them, and I was doing good till I went in, and they slammed that door behind me. I said, oh, no, I can't handle this. So I went one time. And then not having no sense, you know, I just like people. And I went to the inmates asking them, and I, I would never get, and I said, you can't, you shouldn't be too honest. I went to the prison and said to the man, what they got you accused of? Robbery. What they got you accused of? Assault. God did his blessing, what they got you accused of? He said, they ain't got me accused of nothing, I did this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, so I only went once, but uh, it was a phenomenal prison ministry. And to have two folk on the staff with itinerant, with a Master of Divinity degree, so to see that you two have these Master of Divinity brought back some pleasant memories. You got mine years ago. <laughs> yes, and the churches where you serve ought to be wonderfully blessed. Yes, sir. So. Thank you. And then Sister Wanda Smith West. I think I remember you from last year. Yes. Reverend Franklin, if you and Brother Hudson, come here, Reverend Franklin. <laughs> yeah, Reverend Franklin. He and Reverend Hudson back there cracking jokes. <laughs> Reverend Franklin about to pass out. Tell me something about Wanda Smith West. Y'all see that sleeve over there? That's my Mercedes Benz. Reverend Franklin got me that. Oh my God. Yeah, I do. Yes, sir. Tell me about this sister. This is um, Wanda West, one of the faithful members of the Stewart Chapel. Not only she's faithful, she's able to put programs together. She's a wonderful um, participator in helping to um, manage products and, and different programs that we have at Stewart Chapel. She's a good preacher. She has a great foundation. And she is one of the first African-American females to ever be a superintendent in our state. She, not only that, she has so many accolades for this wonderful woman decide at this part of her life to become a minister of the gospel. And I thank the AME Church is not only again a great woman of God, but also a jewel in our church. All right. Reverend Gordon, do you have a letter from Reverend Moore requesting that uh, Carla Green and Mary Wallet be ordained local deacons? Okay, and Wanda, uh, Reverend Franklin, have you submitted a letter on behalf of uh, Wanda Smith West? All right, very good, because no matter what the, the bishop or even the board of examiners recommends, we cannot do anything unless the local church requests it. Yes. So the fact you have requested it, 
A motion it is, is in order that these three would be uh, elected and ordained local deacons. I'll ask Reverend Moore, since two of them come out of your church, if you'd make the motion. I asked Reverend Franklin, since she comes out of your church, you want to second it? All right, you've heard the motion. Are you ready for the question? All in favor will say aye. Aye. I have motions carried. Look forward tomorrow to ordaining you local deacons for your respective churches. Give them a hand. All right. Now, those are, the, those are all your recommendations, correct? Ms. Angela. Yes, those are the recommendations for the class. Okay. Uh, Reverend uh, uh, Slocum, is she here? Reverend Slocum, please come down. While they're coming, let me thank Reverend Gordon and the Board of Examiners for your work and for the fine job that you all have done uh, this year with the students. Give them a hand. All right. Reverend Slocum, how are you feeling? I'm doing well, Bishop. How all are you? All right. Uh, Reverend Slocum is an itinerant deacon. Yes, sir. Uh, Last year, I did not ordain her. She has been working this year with uh, my friend in Byron, Reverend Hicks II, and Reverend Hicks. Who did Reverend Hicks go to? Was, oh, there he is. Um, anything you want to say about Reverend Slocum? She's ready? All right. Uh, Reverend Gordon, anything you want to add? Rev. Slocum, um, let me simply say to you, um, there's a song we used to sing, uh, and I love the song. And I would sing it to myself because nobody else wanted to hear me sing it. <laughs> but I love the song, but it, but it says an awful lot. Uh, you have come up the rough side of the mountain. But the fact of the matter is, as hard as that seems, imagine if you had to climb the smooth side of the mountain. It's much harder on the smooth side. You have nothing to hold on to. So it's my prayer that uh, this will be a fresh beginning for you. Thank you, Bishop. I and I really want you to thank God for his grace, for his mercy, and for his keeping power. And I want you to know your bishop has confidence in you. Thank you. I think you will be better prepared to serve now than you were before. I appreciate that. I'm glad that you see that in me. All right. um, I've been through uh, prayer, meditation, supplication, loss of a mother, um, and just when I want it, God said wait. And so I wait. Well, all I said, walk with your head up. All right, I think yes, for you the best is yet to come. Thank you. All right. Is there a motion? Rem Hicks. As an itinerant elder. You're a deacon now, right? Yeah, as an itinerant elder. There's a second. All right, probably moving second. You've heard the motion. Are you ready for the question? All in favor will say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Motion is carried. Tomorrow it will be my joy to ordain you an itinerant elder. All right.
All right, is Reverend Nance, is Reverend Nance here? Come down, Reverend Nance. How you feeling? I'm good, how you, Bishop? Reverend Nance is an itinerant deacon. And he too has come up the rough side of the mountain. Um, some of you have heard me say this before. Um, but one of the things I thank God for in my own life, I thank God for in my own life. Sometimes I hear some of us talk about God as the God of a second chance. And I strongly disagree with that based on my own life. He's not the God of a second chance. He's God of another chance and another chance and another chance. Now, so Reverend Nance, I hope that with this another chance that you'll become the servant of God that God wants you to be. I firmly believe. And really, I, you know, um, one of the things which I will never uh, forget when I was coming up in Delaware, there was a minister, in fact, she's still alive now, she's 80, um, some years old. Her name is Reverend Sudler, uh, Mount Zion Church in Dover. And even when I went away to pastor in New Jersey, when I came home to Mount Zion, Reverend Sudler would say to me, I'm still praying for you. And all of us are fortunate because we don't realize that there are folk praying for us. Amen. And we don't pray for ourselves. There are folk praying for us. Reverend Nance, I want you to know, you, Reverend Slocum, it's hard sometimes when the bishop has to make a decision that uh, is hurtful and painful to people. And so I'm praying for you that uh, the Lord's going to have his way. And so it's my hope that this conference will agree to ordain you an itinerant elder and that what you have learned will be a blessing for you. Um, you know, again... Sometimes life throws us some curve, but the curve helps us to get where God wants us to be. Sometimes God has to knock us down to pick us up. Amen. So that's my prayer for you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, who's your elder? I come out of Belvin, Michigan AME Church. All right. Williamson, was he on your district? Yes. You want to make a motion? Is there a second? Reverend Gordon? I probably move and second that Reverend Nance to be elected and ordained and I tender the elder African Methodist Episcopal Church. You've heard the motion. Are you ready for the question? Question. All in favor will say aye. Aye. Aye has the motion is carried. Reverend Nance, tomorrow I look forward to being able to ordain you and I tender the elder. Thank All you, right. Bishop. Pleasure. All right, Reverend Gordon, anything else? the list of the uh, recommendations for evangelist license renewal. Do you want me to read their names? 
Sister Bernstein Devereaux, Sister Lily Fluella, Sister Deborah Grable, Sister Sharon Lundy, Brother Leon McBride, Sister Denise Mercer, Sister Janet Nelson, and Brother Johnny Owen. of Evangelist License, what is the pleasure of the body? So moved, Bishop. All right, all in favor will say aye. Aye, to have the motion is carried. Thank you so much. All right, anything else, Madam Chair? This concludes the report of the Board of Examiners, but Bishop, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to serve, and I wanna thank everyone that served on the Board of Examiners this year. Uh, they were a pleasure to work with, and we had a great time. So thank you, everybody. All right, let's give the board and the chair a hand. All right, thank you so very much. Bishop, excuse yes. me. Yes. Uh, we have some of the students who would like to make a presentation. Is it okay if they make it at sure. this time? Yes. Thank you to the distinguished Bishop Jackson, uh, the Distinguished Board of Elders, uh, your wife, their wives, the Macon, Georgia Conference, the class of 2022 want to say thank you to Dean Gordon and the distinguished staff of the Board of Examiners. Uh, we salute you today for excellent preparation most of all for caring and nurturing the class. And Bishop, we did learn something. Uh, we learned uh, there's a four page process for doing a sermon. And I was intrigued because I could compare the model to uh, the research exegeting. Uh, we've learned something, right class? <laughs> But anyway, right now, Bishop, what we wanted to do was not only to thank you and your lovely wife and the elders and their wives, but this distinguished dean and all of these excellent instructors. We do have gifts for everyone. And if you all would uh, meet Sister Jackson, they have to go to storage to get it. And uh, a couple, and Bishop, yours and uh, Sister Jackson's will uh, be delivered tomorrow. That'll be it. God bless you, God keep you. And Bishop, while they go get those gifts, I would like to um, offer high accommodations for uh, Pastor Maria Gordon for doing yeah. such an excellent job yeah. as our dean this year of communication and organization. And we thank God and we appreciate her. God bless you. Amen. All right, let's give our chair a hand. I uh, thank you, members of the board and all, for a job well done. All right. Yes, sir, I'm Gordon. Bishop, we have one question about whether uh, the motion was made for the itinerant deacons for them to be ordained. I didn't do the itinerant deacon. No, but the locals were done, but the itinerant. Well, right. Thank you all for correcting me. Uh, there were two itinerant deacons, right? There's three. There's three itinerant deacons to be ordained. One is going to be on hold. Okay, then let's make the motion for them. Thank you all for correcting me. Bishop, I move that those who uh, have stood here to be candidates for the itinerant deacon track, I move that they be ordained and elected itinerant deacons in the Amy Church. All right, is there a second? You've heard the motion, are you ready for the question? All in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have motion is carried. Thank you so very much. Tomorrow we'll look forward to ordaining our itinerant deacons. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you all for correcting me. All right, thank you. All right, the report from the Macon North. Are y'all ready? Macon South, we have a report from Macon South. Let's go with it. 
Uh, while y'all are getting that ready, come on, Reverend Michelle. Reverend Michelle is going to give her chaplain's report, and then we'll do making south. Good afternoon. Um, the protocol has been established. Um, this is my chaplain report, my second chaplain report. I am honored and humbled to make my the second chaplain report on my ministering call to chaplaincy as an AME church endorsed chaplain. As my journey in chaplaincy continues, God has been present in the midst of COVID-19. I serve as chaplain with responsibility for mental health and behavior health veterans, including Las Vegas Residential and Recovery and Renewal Center, LVR3, Inpatient Acute Mental Health Unit, Critical Care Unit, and Medical Surgery Unit at the VA Southern Nevada Healthcare System. During this year, I begin a new journey at the VA Southern Nevada Healthcare Systems in Las Vegas, Nevada as a staff chaplain. On April 7, 2022, I became board certified with the National Association of Veterans Affairs Chaplains, NAVAC. Chaplaincy is my heart and passion. I'm very compassionate about helping others and meeting them at bedside. I met with several families who have lost their loved ones due to COVID-19 both young and old. I found myself getting closer to God by loving, caring, and valuing people at a deeper level. While on this journey, I must admit, this has been one of the most difficult years of my life. I sat at bedside with others in their pain. While my mother was in the hospital, for a month and a half, and then rehab for two weeks. I minister to her and ask God to give me strength to provide spiritual care and comfort to veterans as my mother during her, their bouts of pain. Through my anticipated grief, I can truly say I know what it feels like and looks like to truly say that God is real and real in my soul. As I pour into others, I allow other chaplains and pastors to support me spiritually and emotionally. My role as a board certified chaplain allowed me to enhance the spirituality of patients and congregants in an intentional and therapeutic way. Further, as a chaplain, I undergird my ministry with a focus that emphasizes the ethics of doing no harm. Chaplaincy afforded me to specialize training in the areas of mental health, palliative care, hospice care, and counseling. As a chaplain, I continue to preach and coordinate worship in the LVR3 and acute mental health unit. I also participated in the Lenten services and preached the last seven words. I am grateful to God for giving me the opportunity to serve and to answer the call to ministry. I appreciate the support and encouragement of Bishop Jackson of the 6th Episcopal District and Bishop Jeffrey Lee, the endorsing agent of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, to be able to serve in this capacity. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you so very much. Let me thank you for your faithfulness and your commitment and for coming to this annual conference to make your report and letting us know both not only your joys but also your burdens. Ministry does have some burdens. All right. Megan South. This is the book of the servants of the South. We are grateful and thankful to God our Father Christ, our Redeemer, Holy Ghost, our Comforter, for blessing us to have successfully completed the 2021-2022 
annual conference year. Bishop Jackson and Supervisor Christy Davis Jackson, Esquire, our illustrious Episcopal leaders who through the 2022 series of annual conferences have declared to us, follow me. Based on the words of Jesus, when he said, come follow me. Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Matthew chapter four, verse 19. Sharon and I are blessed and honored to serve as kingdom builders on earth as it is in heaven with the incredible and awesome team of clergy and laity as we work, serve, fellowship, and support each other in love, peace, and harmony. I give God glory and praise for blessing me with Sharon, who is a special talent. She is my helpmeet in marriage, ministry, and mission. I thank her for the invaluable gift she is to our family, which helps me to do the Lord's work and labor of love with joy, pride, and effectiveness. It is my sincere delight to present the pastors of the Macon South District known as the Servants of the South. We have embraced the Sixth Episcopal District priorities for the quadrennial of 2021 through 2024, which is engaged in kingdom building. We have worked feverishly to bring to fruition the directive of Bishop Jackson. Number one, discipleship. Number two, leadership. Number three, stewardship slash economic development. And number four, righteousness. Our pastors will give an account of their stewardship to the 139th session of the Macon, Georgia Annual Conference. Bishop Jackson, Supervisor Jackson, presiding elders, pastors, delegates, our guests, and all who are sharing with us virtually. I give to you now the servants of the South. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. To Bishop Reginald T. Jackson, Supervisor Christy Davis, Jackson Esquire, to Elder Harvey Wimson, to Sister Sharon Wimson and the Macon Conference. First, I would like to thank God for my wife, Sister Melissa, for laboring with me in this ministry. I also want to thank God for Reverend Sean Drain, his leadership that he provided here. I am excited to be given my first report here at St. Peter AME Church, also known as The Rock in the Valley. This has been an amazing and exciting and transformational year here at St. Peter. Here's some of the highlights of what God has done. Jesus, we lift your name on high, your name on high, be lifted high. Come on, say. Jesus, we lift your name on high, your name on high, be lifted high. Hey. Jesus, we lift your name on high, Woo. your name on high, hey. be lifted high. Lift it up. Jesus, we lift your name on high. Oh.
Bishop, I am glad to report one in session. Total funds raised this year, $371,720, a 10% increase from last year. The mortgage is current, and yes, I am being paid. Bishop, we want to thank you for your godly wisdom and your loving kindness for making me the pastor here at St. Peter. Thank you, sir. Bishop Jackson, I bring you greeting from the St. Thomas African Methodist Episcopal Church, 206 Hawkinfield, Georgia, Dooley Street. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Our number convergence, three. Number section 11, um, the church is, the budget has been paid and the church has the insurance pastor being paid and we have accomplished we purchased the building next door the house next door and we paid that off and we did have black history voter registration job fair and workshop for local daycares and we have a partnership with the university of georgia and we have the technologies there and everything, we thank God for serving St. Thomas. Good morning to the 139th session of the Bacon Georgia Angel Conference. We greet you in the name of Jesus. We want to say, if I be lifted from the earth, I draw all men unto me, to Bishop Richard T. Jackson, Sister Christian Davis Jackson. We greet you in presiding the other Harvey Oliver Wilson. We are uh, Pastor St. George M.E. Church in Marshallville, Georgia, where everybody is somebody but Christ is truly all. Uh, number conversion zero, number session zero, active member 17, foreign rated, 13,700, is church insured, yes, pastor paid, yes, mortgage, no. It's been a pleasure to serve at St. John for over 20 years. We understand that with God all things are possible, without him we can do nothing. We are nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody about a man named Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. To Bishop Reginald T. Jackson and the Macon, Georgia, 139th Macon, Georgia Annual Conference. Bring you greetings from the Turner Chapel AME Church in Cochrane, Georgia, 163 7th Street Northwest, where I serve as the pastor. Um, in terms of our report for the year, we have um, zero conversions, um, we have one accession number of active members for the year is 45. Um, the fund raised for the church for the year is $45,250. Um, the church is properly insured. The pastor is being paid his salary. Um, there is no mortgage or indebtedness for the church for the year. And we are certainly delighted um, to be able to continue to serve in this capacity. We've done some exterior repairs that was much needed for the church for the year. And we're continuing to reach out in the community and get a lot of people who used to come to the church to come back and fellowship with us. So we, we had a pretty good year this year. And uh, we just want to continue to do God's work, God's way. Reverend Willoughby Carter III, Allen Chapel Amy Church. 9830 Miami Valley Road, Fort Valley, Georgia, 31030. Praising God is what we do. Number conversion two, number section zero. Number active member nine, fundraiser 32,500. Is the church insurance? Yes. Is the pastor being paid? Yes. Is there a mortgage? No. To uh, Bishop uh, Reginald T. Jackson, Supervisor Christy Jackson, my presiding elder, uh, Dr. Harvey Williamson, and to the 139th session of the Macon, Georgia Annual Conference, I greet you in the joy of Jesus. Uh, we had a wonderful year this year at uh, Davis Chapel AME Church, which is located at 146 Felton Road, Perry, Georgia. Um, we have one conversion, no assistance, Active members, 42. Amount raised for the year, 
25,850. Yes, the pastor's being paid. Church is insured. No, there's no mortgage on the church. Greetings to you, Bishop Reginald Jackson and Supervisory Christy Jackson Esquire, and to my brothers and sisters for the 139th Annual Conference for the Macon Conference. I am Reverend Dr. Sinclair and Greater Third, pastor of Mayfield Zion AME Church in Alamo, Georgia. First of all, I want to apologize for doing this report in shades. However, I did have eye surgery, so my eyes are very sensitive to the light, so it's necessary that I wear shades at this point to do this uh, report. Right now, we have the number of conversions, zero. Number of accessions, zero. We have a total of 10 members. Funds raised $21,386. The pastor is getting paid. The church is insured. Also, one that you know some of the great things that we have done at Mayfield during this time. Number one, we have started a Bible study. This is the first time in Mayfield Zion's history that they've had a weekly Bible study, which we have started. Number two, we've also partnered with the community whereby we're feeding over 200 families every other month in the city of Alamo, Georgia. So that's one of the great things that we're doing. We want to thank you so much for this opportunity to serve God, to serve his people, and to do kingdom business. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Good morning, Bishop Jackson and Supervisor Christy Jackson Esquire, Elder Williamson and Sister Williamson. Welcome to this 139th session. I am the Reverend Selena Clark, who is pastoring Adam Smith Tabernacle, 304 Green Street, Warner Robins, Georgia, where the church, we are the church with the community at heart. We have had no conversions or sessions. We do have five active members, the funds that have been raised are $41,918.89. The church is insured and the pastor is being paid. And yes, we do have a mortgage. Some of the things that we have been doing at Adam Smith is we do water distribution to our neighboring schools. We've had a yard sale. We've had a bread and pantry giveaway. At present, we are doing a, write, a grant writing class and we have done vaccine forums along with partnering with our neighboring churches in a grocery giveaway. Thank you again for the chance to pastor. Good afternoon, greetings to Bishop Jackson and to my presiding elder, Harvey Williamson, and to the already established protocol. This is Reverend Ella Chambliss. I'm pastor of the Helena Circuit of the Macon Conference, Macon South District. It consists of two churches, Turner Chapel AME Church in McCray, Georgia, and St. Paul AME Church in Glenwood, Georgia. Um, there have been um, no conversions, no accessions. Uh, the churches are insured. The pastor is being paid. There is not a mortgage on either church. We thank God for another year and keeping us in his care. Turner Chapel has six uh, full-time adult members and two children. Funds raised $19,650. Glenwood has 15 full-time members and two children. Amount raised $20,038. Our outreach this year has consisted of uh, Turner Chapel adopting a, a special needs class. And we have uh, provided them with uh, waters and uh, school supplies, scissors, crayons, and I also was able to FaceTime the class and got to meet all of the students, which was awesome. Uh, St. Paul will award two scholarships for graduating seniors from Wheeler County High School. Our missionaries have worked diligently to care for those in need. Our sons of Allen have assisted with full food giveaways and have been really active in community. We thank you for the opportunity to serve. That completes my report. My name is Reverend Carl Wilson. I bring you greetings from the Abbeville Circuit, Cook Chapel and Allen Chapel AME, and uh, to Bishop Jackson, Christy Jackson Esquire, Supervisor. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. I'd like to thank Elder Williamson and Sister Williamson 
for giving me the opportunity to serve. Number of conversions, zero. Number of possessions, zero. Number of active members at Cook Chapel is 21. Number of active members at Allen Chapel is 10. Amount raised at Cook is $29,706. At Allen Chapel, $4,500. Pastor is being paid. Church is insured. Church has no mortgage. Uh, my comments, I've enjoyed my service this year. We are renovating the inside of Allen Chapel, AME Church. We're getting a new, we're getting a new air condition in there and we fixed the ceiling fans. At Cook Chapel, we are getting ready to, uh, for a new church. We will be probably going in in the next month or so. Uh, all of my people, we enjoy serving the Lord. We have our Black History Program, and we also had, our, had a voter's registration drive. We have a very spirited church. We all love God and are doing God's business, God's way. To the already established protocol, I bring you greetings from Gordon Chapel AME Church, Fort Valley, Crawford County. Number of conversions, zero. Number of accessions, zero. Amount raised, number of members, 18. Amount raised, $37,461. Yes, the church is insured. Yes, the church, the pastor is getting his salary. And no, we don't have a mortgage. Thank you for the opportunity to serve. This is Pastor Marva Cleveland, reporting from Grant Chapel AME Church, Macon. Speaking it in the atmosphere, God is an awesome God. We praise God for three conversions and one accession added to the role of 47 active members. As we continue to live through changing times, we hail to God's unchanging hand. He blessed us financially with $97,368 for ministry, operation of his house, including the mortgage, insurance, and salary. Spiritually speaking, this house of prayer continues to go higher in the Lord. Our way maker, promise keeper, enlarge our territory as we acquire property for additional parking. We bless the warming center with new and used winter clothing items as well as the prison ministry blessing the incarcerated, just to name a few. To God be the glory for the great things he has done. Hi, I'm Pastor Dexter Mullen at Belvin AME Church. At Belvin, we have 22 active members. This year, we raised $43,695. The church is insured, the pastor is getting paid, we have no mortgage. This year, we have an elementary school in Macon County, gave them supplies for their school year. The missionary also helped a local nursing home and gave them items and supplies to help them along the way. During Thanksgiving, we helped and blessed a family. Also, on the premises of Bell and Me Church, we have a broken down bell. We have a machinist that rebuilt the bell and made it whole again. Now it's ringing. The doors of the church is open. I want to thank the bishop, the presiding elder, and the Belvin family for a wonderful conference year. God bless you and have a wonderful year.
this is Pastor Marvin Colbert here at Bethel AME Church, Macon, Georgia. Once again, it's just an absolute delight to come and bring this pastor's annual report for the year 2021-2022. The number of conversions is three. The number of accessions is three. COVID did not prevent us from having people to come and join and worship with Bethel. The number of active members here is 76. The total amount raised this year is $192,503. The church is fully insured and the pastor is being paid a full salary. We do not have a traditional mortgage, but we do have a small loan. The highlight for this year is Bethel turning 100 years old. We celebrated our century anniversary in July and our speaker for our celebration is none other than our bishop reginald t jackson and he brought an inspiring sermon that was entitled come back to bethel i'll never forget it and bishop if you would lean forward i just want you to know that i want to come back to bethel amen and so it's just an absolute pleasure to serve here i thank you for the opportunity to serve here at Bethel, Macon, Georgia. Everyone, please be blessed. Bye-bye. Greetings to Bishop Reginald Thomas Jackson and all who make up the Macon, Georgia Conference. I present this report of the Ministry of Greater Turner, the number of conversions, one, the number of accessions, three, the number of active members, 53, Total funds raised $175,225. The pastor's salary is being paid. There is a mortgage on the church that is current. I thank God and I thank Bishop Jackson. I thank my presiding elder and Mrs. Williamson, my wife and my entire family for their support. I thank the wonderful, kind, loving members of Greater Turner. This is our report. God's name be praised. Greetings to the Macon, Georgia Annual Conference. Greetings to our presiding Bishop Reginald T. Jackson and to Supervisor Christie. Also, thank God for our presiding elder, Reverend Dr. Harvey Williamson, and to his wife, Sharon. It is my pleasure to be able to make this report for St. Luke and Amy Church, Macon, Georgia. We're at 2056 Mason Street. Our theme for this conference year was we are better together. Each one will reach one. So we decided that we would focus on four things. We will learn how to grow together. We will learn how to study and pray together. We will learn how to do ministry together. And also, we will learn how to walk together even closer. The pandemic has taught us a lot. Pandemic has also let us know that we had to grow a lot. And because of that, a Christian education reached out and our plan was to do legacy planning this year. Oh, what an awesome time we had. We learned about what it is to have life insurance. We were taught up about what advanced directive really means. We were taught about how to do wheels and what it means to have a power of attorney. We also was taught about what digital binding mean. And so we grew in that area and we are thankful for that growth during that time of teaching. But we also knew that we still had to study and to pray together, Bible study, as well as church school is still being held, as well as intercessory prayer. I am thankful for the class leaders who learned how to reach each one that was on their role and report back faithfully so that we could reach out to every person and contact them to know that they were being taken care of. Then we learned how to do ministry together as we were blessed to do evangelism, even in the community. 
and even in the city of Macon as we reached out to loaves and fishes until daybreak. It was a blessing. But we also learned that we had to walk together. For even during a pandemic, we had to learn even the more to walk by faith. We are grateful for this time of learning. This year has brought about some changes. As I said, we are located at 2056, where God blessed us with a scout troop, and the number is 2056. They are growing, and we are thankful. This conference year, we raised a total amount of $61,899.11. There were no conversions, no accessions, no baptism. There is no indebtedness to the church. Members on roll, 59 active members of 30. The pastor is receiving a salary. The church is fully insured. I want to say it has been a blessing to serve this church with such great people. I'm thankful for the opportunity to work for the kingdom of God with some of the greatest people of God. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Pastor Dale Hicks of Mount Hope AME Church, and I'm here to give Mount Hope's annual conference report for the year 2022. Uh, in terms of the number of conversions, we have none. Number of accessions, we have none. Uh, for active members, we have a total of 26. Uh, for fund raised for the church of the conference year, we have raised $29,737. Uh, the church is insured. Yes, the pastor is getting paid. Yes, the church has a mortgage. And yes, the church mortgage is current. Uh, our ongoing theme for this year uh, church and community coming together. Uh, we have, first for the first time, Mount Hope has applied for a 5013C uh, outreach ministry. It is titled Bread for Life Outreach Ministries Incorporated. Uh, we will be dealing with a food bank and a clothing bank for the people who are in need. Also, Mount Hope is seeking uh, to become a polling site uh, for the people in the community so that they will not have to go across town to vote and we can be able to vote in our own backyard. So congratulations to Mount Hope and its members. Uh, we are doing a fantastic job. Uh, I applaud them and we're asking that you continue to keep up the good work. May God bless you all and thank you for allowing me to present Mount Hope's 2022 annual conference report. Stewart Chapel 2021 2022 year number of conversions five, number of accessions five, active members 80, funds raised 94,000, churches insured, pastors being paid, and there is no mortgage. And this is what's been happening at Stewart Chapel. On the brink of 2021, we were looking forward to our country returning back to normal. However, the year presented its own set of challenges. Despite the continuous rise in COVID-19 numbers, the Lord gave us innovative ways to serve our community and minister to their spiritual and physical needs. Our praise and park outdoor worship services continued. Families that probably would have never walked through our doors joined us. We prayed with some, sat with others in their sorrow, and rejoiced as God performed the miraculous. Throughout the year, Stewart Chapel has remained true to its mission to be a church that embraces its community. We were the host site for COVID-19 vaccinations. We opened our doors for the anti-co-sleeping luncheon that was sponsored by the district attorney's office, as well as we were the host site for the mayor's making violence prevention forum that gave victims of crime a safe place to share. With the help of community partners, we were able to establish a clothing bank and we provided approximately 5,000 meals to the homeless and hungry. And our community refrigerator continues to be a source for those experiencing difficulties. God has consistently showed himself as our faithful provider. And for that, we are grateful. Greetings. 
I'm the Reverend Conrad Barnett, pastor of Doorsville AME Church, located at 2730 Millerfield Road, Macon, Georgia, where we are doing the work of the Lord, and God is blessing us and transforming us from the inside and out. We are loving it and loving on each other and the community. I report to you today that we have zero conversions, one accession, 44 active members, almost $153,000 raised. The church is insured. The pastor is being paid, and there is no mortgage. So Bishop Reginald T. Jackson, thank you for allowing me to serve. Elder Harvey Williamson, thank you for supporting me. And to the Durisville family, thank you for your love and support you give to me and my family. So to all of you, blessings. Come join us at Durisville where we are all in for Jesus. Like for most, 2021 was a year of challenges here at Bethel. We had zero conversions. However, we did gain one accession. We have 40 active members, and with the help of the Lord, we raised $113,406 this year. The mortgage is current, and this conference year, we were able to pay additional payments on the principal. The church is insured, and I am being paid my salary. Here at the Light on the Hill, we continue to move out, move up, and move forward. We embrace technology in a big way. The utilization of Zoom, conference calls, Facebook, and Cash App, we continue to adapt to what is now being called the new normal. Through the use of these innovative options, the Bethel families continue to worship, praise, and serve God. There has been an interruption in our regularly scheduled program, and the Lord is allowing us to see things with a fresh new perspective, and we are truly excited about our future. I am blessed and honored to be the pastor of Bethel Powerville AME Church. I am Jacqueline J. Craig, and I approve this message. Greetings to each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters, and to each and every one of you who make up this Macon, Georgia annual conference. I am Sharon Homer, pastor of Gray Chapel AME Church right here in Macon, Georgia. For this year, we have had one conversion and one accession. We have 30 members on roll, active members on roll at this time. Fund raised for this year include $66,861.61. Our church is insured with Church Mutual for $902,000. I have been paid a salary for this conference year. We do not have a mortgage. The highlights for this year include includes the baptism of five beautiful children. We also support our neighborhood school, Burdell Hunt, and our last support included buying 600 pencils for the children for testing, which is coming up soon. We also, um, during the Lent season, purchase supplies, uh, bath towels, bath cloths, and other accessories uh, to support our local shelter. Yes, we have had some ups and some downs, but we have had a pretty good year here at Great Chapel. We thank God for all that he has done and all that he will continue to do for the church. God bless you and have a wonderful conference day. I praise God and give him glory for our production crew. In light of all that has recently transpired in the country, with Morris Brown College retaining its accreditation after 20 years and the newly confirmed and first female of African descent as Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson. Therefore, I have said to the production crew, with the Lord, we can't be stopped. Regrettably, the Macon South District lost one of our most outstanding leaders, a true disciple of Christ in the person of Sister Wanda Lane who served as our district director of the Young People's Division. She served with dignity, character, kindness, and distinction. We appreciate her 
and the time that she gave in service. We miss her, we love her so much to the degree that we have entrusted the YPD ministry into the hands of her daughter, Sister Tashanda Marie Lane. We believe that you will be sure to continue the wonderful legacy of your mother. Finally, I summarize this report by sharing the statistics of our work and service to his kingdom. There are 26 conversions, 37 accessions, 1,319 disciples of Christ, 925 of those are active, and we generated for all purposes 2,130,291.13. This concludes our report. Thank you for your time and attention. May God bless you is our prayers. Thank you. All right, we've heard the report of the Macon South District. Dr. Dixon. We are the Macon South District rise at this time. We rise first to give God some praise for our godly, loving, caring, and supportive elder and his wife. And Bishop, we ask you, with your godly wisdom, to send us back our loving elder to finish his, finish his work at the Macon South District. Thank you. Elder, you want to go back? Don't you live in Columbus? Ain't that nearer to Columbus than here? Sister Williamson, you want to come back? All right. And I'm going to pray over it. All the ministers and lay people of the Macon South District, could you please stand? <laughs> Personally and on behalf of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, let me thank all of the pastors and all of the churches on the Macon South District for your support of the ministry and mission of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, and I do understand that oftentimes what we ask of you to do is a sacrifice that makes it more difficult for you to do the work you want and need to do in your local churches, but nonetheless, you make the sacrifice and you help the African Methodist Episcopal Church fulfill its mission and its ministry. And your bishop wants you to know that I do not take for granted what you continue to do. So thank you so much for your faithfulness, for your support. Give them a hand. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, Elder and Sister Williamson. Thank you so much. All right, Macon North. Macon North. Get your 
Let the church say amen. To Bishop Jackson, to Supervisor Christy Jackson, to this 139th session of the Macon, Georgia Annual Conference. Bishop, I am glad to be alive. Praise God from whom all blessings amen. flow for this wonderful Macon North District that you have sent me to. I have enjoyed being here back at home in Macon, Georgia. And I want you to know how much I appreciate all of the pastors, all of the lay people, and the response that they have given during these trying times. We meet by Zoom most of the time, but by the middle of the year when we had our when we had our church school convention, we met for the first time this past year in full force, and I was just amazed at how many people showed up there at St. James in Monticello. Now, most of our pastors have opened up their churches up fully, and now that we have come to this point, all of them should be opened up fully. We have uh, made sure that we followed all of the protocols for COVID. We have been able to make it through this year without closing down any of our churches because of COVID. All of our uh, assessments have been paid. If you noticed on the sheet from the Macon North District, we increased 51 by 51 conversions, 21 accessions, funds raised was one and, and basically one and a half million dollars. And that was an increase, and I have to ask a statistician about that, but I think we had an increase in all of our areas this year. So Bishop, I am just pleased, and I'd like to thank my wife, Xavier. Xavier, would you please stand? for supporting me and staying with me and riding with me everywhere I go. Thank you so much, Bishop, for this opportunity to serve. Well, all the <clears throat> presiding elder and Mrs. Smith and all of the ministers and laity of the Macon North District, please stand.
That's my buddy. Personally, on behalf of the African Methodist Episcopal Church, let me thank Presiding Elder and Mrs. Smith for their leadership and their service to the Macon North District, to the Macon Conference, and to the 6th Episcopal District. Let me also thank the ministers and laity of the Macon North District for your support of the ministry and mission of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And let me also say that I am very much aware that often what we ask you to do becomes burdensome to what you seek to do in your local churches. But faithfully, you support the African Methodist Episcopal Church in our ministry and our mission. And I want to assure you that this bishop does not take for granted what you do and a very appreciative. Won't you give them a hand? <laughs> now, the preacher from this morning wants to say something. Go ahead, say it, Dr. Cook. <clears throat> Thank you, Bishop. I simply want to ask you if you would be ever so kind to send back to the Macon North District the dynamic duo of presiding elder Bertrand Smith and his fantastic area consultant, David Smith. And we will be so happy to keep doing and keep going as he has led us thus far. And I want y'all to know, Sister Smith and I have one thing in common. We both love chocolate cake. All right, thank you so much again. All right. Now, our brothers and sisters, <clears throat> we're going to get ready to break. We will return at 7 o'clock p.m. tonight. 7 o'clock p.m. tonight is Women in Ministry. I want to see all of us back at 7 o'clock p.m. to support our women in ministry. We want the women to support us. Let us support our women in ministry. 7 o'clock p.m. PM. Seven o'clock PM. Seven o'clock PM. Repeat after me. Seven o'clock PM. All right, we are adjourned. I'll see you.